Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Ian here, in Beijing. Olympic tower behind me. The weather today is not fantastic. The air is a little bit poor. Um, we are now out of winter and in, officially, in spring. But as you can see, we still have these days where it's cold and it's dull. I'm out here in one of the largest city urban green areas in the whole wide world. And before I go on and tell you the top three reasons that people are raving about when they first visit China or even when they live in China or spend time here, the three top reasons that they're raving about in one bonus, I'll put a bonus in at the end. Before I tell you that, let me tell you about this area in Beijing because not a lot of people come here. So this is the Olympic Forest Park. It is about three square miles, but if you also take in the fact that it's part of a wider Olympic area, and you take all that space into consideration, the parks, the scenic area, stadiums, and all the other stuff around this place, then this area is approximately huge, man. It's absolutely huge. The park is on the northern end of the central axis of Beijing. The central axis is a set of famous historical landmarks that line up um, as you draw a line through the city centre, the centre of Beijing. And for me, if you ever walk the central axis in Beijing, it is one of the most stunning, absolutely one of the most stunning city walks in the world, I believe. So the Beijing Olympic Forest Park, need to remember and call it the Forest Park, it was built for the Beijing Olympics uh, 2008 and it was the leisure site for all the athletes and the, their entourage, all the staff and so on. They would come here uh, and relax after competing. The Olympic Forest Park is the, the largest urban green landscape in the whole of Asia one of the largest in the, the world and it's the largest park in Beijing. It's divided by the Fifth Ring Road. The Olympic Forest Park has a, there's a northern garden and a southern garden and it's connected, <laughs> talking to me here this, this uh, sign, and it's connected by an ecological bridge which I'm on my way to, to see have a look at because I have no idea where that is. It's somewhere up this way, it's a bit of a distance. But during the summer, there are many activities here and I often find um, when I mention this park to other people, other foreign, foreigners um, or other people here local in Beijing, they often don't come here or they don't know that much about it, which really surprises me because it is a beautiful area and it's a place in the city of a city of 22 million people where you can get in touch with nature, but yet you're still inside this metropolis, this bustling mega city which Beijing is um, and I love it, I, I really like it here. Um, it's such a peaceful place, helps me relax and chill and reflect on life in general and life is awesome and it should always be celebrated and protected. Life is an awesome thing. <laughs> So I have lived in China for eight years now and I've been around town so to speak but it's great to see so many other people now um, visiting China and being very surprised by what they are experiencing um, and, and they're now sharing it online and I've watched a ton of videos recently from people who are either visiting China, living and working in China or passing through China on their way to somewhere else and I am picking up some main themes of what they are feeding back around what is most surprising to them. I have to say the themes are very similar to what I've mentioned in the past and I've picked out three and I've also thrown in an extra bonus um, at the end, something that I felt is worth talking about. Just passing a public toilet there in this forest park can you imagine what that toilet would be used for or how safe that toilet would be if this park was say, let's just say for instance, somewhere else in the world? Maybe it would not be 
safe. Just saying like, but weird as well. I think it would be a little bit weird. You know what I mean? One of these areas where you just you just want to stay away from. If it was somewhere else here, perfectly safe. Go in, do a pee, leave, job done. I always mention toilets in my videos. Hmm. So top of the list, the number one thing that is often shared about what is surprising when people visit China for the first time is this idea of safety, the whole safety element. And I think this is because the media in the West often paints the picture that China has surveillance and police everywhere. And there is a need for this. And that's because it's um, a lawless society or something. But the truth is, you can walk around freely and feel absolutely safe at any time of the night or day. Now, you try doing that in London or New York. It is particularly pleasing to see women visiting China and talking about this and how safe they feel walking around at night and how safe it is for their family. For me, that is a real reflection on the problems that we have in the West and how we actually do not look after each other and or respect our communities. Now, second up, is the surprise that people have when they travel inside China and how they are so shocked by the infrastructure and how easy it is to get around inside cities and also to travel from a city to city. I see videos where people are absolutely gobsmacked by the train stations, the metro links, the taxis, the bullet trains, bridges, you name it, they are just blown away by all the same stuff that I was when I first came to China. People cannot believe what is happening in China with regards to the internal infrastructure because they compare it to what they have back home. And what they have back home is often nothing like what's going on here in China. And then they begin to ask themselves questions about that whole thing. And I love that. I love that people come to this side of the world and then go back to the UK, the USA or Europe or whatever. And then they are sitting there saying, oh, wait a minute, wait a wee minute here. I think I am being conned because this infrastructure that I am working and using day to day, there's nothing like I've saw in China. And you're telling me China is a place that, that's not got it correct? Hmm. So the number three is very close to my extra bonus point. This is selling um, drinks and stuff. So they're very close, number three in my bonus. But I picked this one as my number three because I am from Glasgow. And we've got a saying in Glasgow and that is that people make Glasgow and for me that's the same in China. My number three pick on what I'm seeing people talk about when they visit China for the first time and what they're really excited and blown away by, number three is the hospitality. The people in China are very friendly. They're very curious and they're very welcoming and this is often commented upon by surprised and amazed foreigners. And what is especially pleasing to me is when you see some vloggers travel into the very fabrics of the place that they are actually visiting and see the local communities and they, and how the local communities are thriving by working to together. And I think this surprises people because in the West, the impression is that everyone is oppressed to the point that we all live in fear here in China. So everyone is totally closed off from each other. And that is not the case. It is a beautiful, wonderfully welcoming place. And the sense of humour, community, and friendship, camaraderie, the ability to appreciate the small things in life is heartwarming when you visit China. So my bonus that one for good measure, the one to go with the three previous points that I have mentioned 
on what surprises people the most when they visit China for the first time. My number three is the food. I see a lot of visitors rave about the food. I also do see some curious faces and some maybe adjustments that people have to be made or people have to make um, to get the food because some of the food is unusual and I think that is why I put food as my number four or my bonus and not in my top three because people do have to adjust a little bit to the food and I have to admit when I first came to China I was also concerned about what I would eat and if the food would be something I would like and enjoy and I was also if I'm honest a little bit suspicious about the quality of the food and I, I was so wrong the food is amazing and the quality control here is better than what I actually see in the West the quality control is better here than in the West because the food here is very much a cornerstone of the culture in China and the focus on the quality is paramount to the success of the industry or your restaurant. It is almost self-regulatory in a way. If you serve poor food, poor quality food, no one will buy it and basically then yeah you're out of business. One thing to caution here though is there is a huge selection of foreign food as well as Chinese food in China but Chinese food has so many different styles and flavours and traditions that reflect each of the different provinces, if you like. And you have to think a little bit like the difference between, say, Scottish food versus maybe food you would get in London. Or even if you take it to America, you'd have to look at each of the American states and the styles of food that you would get there and possibly be aware that it's not all the same and possibly not all to your liking in America because the food is different in different states and it's the same here in China and if you go to America that might be the same I mean I have a mate that is not fond of Mexican food I know <laughs> I mean I love Mexican food and they're not keen on it Mexican food in America Look at this. You can imagine this during the summer. It's beautiful. But to finish off, people will comment in the boxes below that I am biased and that I am paid by someone to say this positive stuff about China. I can assure you that I am not paid for making these videos. But like most Scottish people that I know, I know my own mind. And I speak about what I see and experience and I speak with honesty. Scottish people are known to call it how it is and that my friends is my game. I say this positive stuff about China because I really enjoy living here and the reasons that I've mentioned above the previous three and the bonus are all the reasons that I enjoy living here and then there's a whole lot more and there are two key reasons that I will always keep speaking up and they are one First of all, when I compare the advances that China has made in the last 30 years or so, I have to ask myself, what are the Western democracies doing with all the money that they generate? And I've seen videos and pictures and heard many stories of what China and Beijing were like the 20, 30, 40 years ago. And the country has come so far in such a short period of time. The money invested in advancing the lives of people living in China and the fact that this has been done and it's visible, you can see it, you cannot miss it. It's everywhere, in every city, everywhere you go in China. You can see where the money's gone. So many advances and if you have to come to China and, and, and travel China and see that for yourself, then I guarantee that when you leave, you will sing the praises of what the money has been spent on. It's been spent on and invested on communities, the people, their well-being and the infrastructure that supports that. Now, point two, and this second point that I'm going to talk about is almost answering my first point, And that is, 
where is all the money gone? And the answer to that question is the money in the West has went and been wasted on war. And to be honest, it has not benefited the many, it's actually benefited the few. And I speak out because I want other people to see what can be achieved if there is a focus on bettering the lives of people rather than destroying things. What is the point of destroying things? Anyway, this is me, Ian, here in Beijing, wishing you all the best. Take care of yourself, your family and your community. And remember, above all else, peace out. I'm away to find an ecological bridge or whatever that is. Stay tuned and I'll share it with you. So this here is an ecological bridge because basically over there is the fifth ring road which is one of the busiest ring roads motorways in Beijing and this bridge is like a landmass it's like a I don't know a park an extension to the park and it joins the south part of the Olympic Forest Park to the northern part of the Olympic Forest Park and it's cool because when you're walking through this other than the noise you don't even feel like you are walking over a bridge that is going over a, I don't know, a five lane on each side motorway. And for me, that is pretty damn good. Yeah. Catch you in the next video. Take care. Ah, I need a coffee.